We're here at the British Library taking Liberty's exhibition and we're very lucky to have an interview with exhibition curator Matthew Shaw. We've got an exclusive preview of the exhibition before the public arrives. The exhibition at the British Library are on taking liberties um, is based on a, a lot of loans from many institutions but it's also based on the British Library's collections and so we were able to exploit its rich uh, resources. As curators on the exhibition we knew there were certain key iconic documents we really wanted to have such as the Bill of Rights, Charles I death warrant, Magna Carta. Getting the idea of the story was uh, quite a long process. We knew the outline, we knew we wanted to tell the history of political rights and put it on display here at the library. And we knew we wanted it to be about these central documents. So they beca became the skeleton for the story. And then we wanted it to be sort of chronological but also thematic so we investigate these issues such as where does the law um, come into the, our idea of rights? Um, what about Parliament? Where did that come from? What about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? How did that happen? One of the most exciting things about doing the exhibition was deciding what to put into it and it's almost like a tip of the iceberg in a way. There were so many things we could have chosen. Um, but in the end, because we wanted to make everything really work for, it, work for its place in the exhibition, it had to do several things if possible. So it had to look interesting or have an interesting story. The document had to have something curious about it. Like for example, there's an early printing of Magna Carta from the 16th century but that was the first book also printed by a, a woman or with a woman's name on, on, on the cover page anyway. So it had to do several things. That told us about the, the rule of law, told us about Magna Carta and also about women's rights as well. Magna Carta really is the key document in the exhibition, not only because of its age, it dates from 1215 and here at the library we have what, two of the four surviving copies from 1215, both of which are on display. But it contains certain key rights uh, which are in place in the United Kingdom, uh, notably the right to a, a free trial. Um, however, it's written in, in Latin, it's written in a completely different society, and many of the clauses really have no relevance. So the fact it's been reinvented over time shows the power it, it has. To some extent, it's not just the ideas within it, it's the fact it's become this symbolic document and has lasted so long, has been cited so often in the courts, and is something around which people can um, hang and place their ideas of liberty. We're lucky to have with us in the studio today Tim Black, writer and commentator for the online magazine Spite. Tim reviewed the exhibition Taking Liberty, so I'm just going to start off, Tim, with what you made of the exhibition. I really enjoyed the exhibition. I thought it was full of interesting, inspiring stuff, full of uh, documents, uh, testaments to uh, people's struggle for freedom. But while these individual documents in their own right were incredibly inspiring, mm -hmm. I was left a little bit perturbed by the overall sort of message of the exhibition. Freedom and liberty um, was almost turned into something which we should be grateful for at, at, at the very end of the exhibition. Um, that it shifts from something which that they struggle for and by the end of the exhibition, freedom and liberty have been turned into something else, been turned into something which is given to us mm -hmm. by um, by the ruling class, uh, by the ruling elite. And of course, historically, it's often been the other way around. It's been people demanding uh, freedom from uh, those powers that rule over their lives. I completely agree with that. And I'd say that that even comes before you enter the exhibition with the sort of tagline that's associated with it. With Well, I've got an example here with the, in some countries, you wouldn't have the right to visit this exhibition. It just gives this immense sense of how lucky we are, rather than focusing, as you said, on the struggles taking place over the centuries for rights. Outside the uh, exhibition at the British Library next to St Pancras are some of the posters that relate to the exhibition, and they say more people voted for the X Factor than voted at the uh, national election. And there's also one saying, um, in some countries, you wouldn't be allowed to come to this exhibition which are really quite provocative statements and even you could argue statistically they're not quite right. Um, however, they're really to challenge and perhaps they're supposed to be a bit cheeky as well to get people to think. We really didn't want this to be an exhibition that was just for people who go to exhibitions, we wanted it 
to be for everybody. So it's really just a way to get people in and they can, they can disagree with those, those if they want. And in fact, we're pleased if they do disagree and we've got a comments wall and so on. Um, inside the exhibition though, we also look at this sort of ambiguity between the struggle for rights and the fact it did take a long time, particularly the right to vote in, in, in England and Scotland and uh, Northern Ireland, it took a long time to come for all people compared to many places in Europe. And, and so why, why was that? So there's a bit of a ambiguity between the struggle and also the fact that people sometimes are, are willing just to live with the status quo, so we, so we look at that. And then we also don't want to sort of patronise or dumb down in any way, sort of be too celebratory either. So we ask people to come and, well, invite people to come and look and think and really try and make, raise up issues rather than say this is the final answer the British Library has found. It's really a place for discussion and reflection. And what do you think of the Magna Carta? I mean, the Magna Carta is heralded as a sort of very critical document, both in the UK and globally, in terms of um, in terms of liberty. Actually, I've, I've got a um, copy of the Magna Carta. I nicked it from the exhibition. I mean, bought it, of course. <laughs> For... There it is. It's in quite good nick, to be honest. The Magna Carta clearly is a monumental document. Uh, Perhaps not in and of itself, its significance and its meaning uh, tended to correspond with you know, different periods of sort of historical uh, social unrest. Mm. But the thing is about the, the Magna Carta, in some ways it's not much more than a product of inter-elite squabbling. Um, it's a bunch of barons who are a bit angry at King John, who's demanding a little bit more money off them. And it leaves the vast majority of the population untouched. Uh, in, in some ways they had to make do with, I, th I think it was something called the Forest Charter, uh, although Charter of the Forest, which is placed next to the Magna Carta in the exhibition itself, which basically gives the people of, of uh, England in the 13th century uh, the right to scavenge. So in terms of its actual relevance to the people at the time, in terms of the people's actually input into it, it, it was virtually non-existent. Habeas corpus is a legal device, which means that if you're put in prison, you have the right, or your lawyer has the right, to bring you to court to test why you're put in prison. And for a long time this was an idea that was lurking in Magna Carta but never really spelt out. And to get round it as well, people used to send people to Scotland or overseas the Caribbean or move them from prison to prison. And so in the 17th century there was a movement to reform this and in 1679 Habeas Corpus Act was passed which was a pass to prevent people being removed overseas or, or, for, or imprisoned without trial. And this really became the cornerstone for English liberties. With reference to modern day society, especially in England, where the 42-day detention um, without trial is being debated, Britain is, in theory, a free country, a country that gives liberty to all of its citizens, but yet at the same time is looking to infringe upon that freedom with uh, new laws, anti-terror laws mostly. Now regarding the 42 days detention without charge at Fiori um, earlier last year, once again it seemed to be a, a debate about liberty which was you know, in, in sort of conducted, not, if not exactly behind closed doors, certainly behind a sort of a, a protected bulletproof screen, insofar as many, you know, many of the actual population had very little involvement or say in these debates. Um, you had plenty of parliamentarians coming out to denounce the measures as being authoritarian. But at the same time, they, they made a rather weak case for something like liberty, insofar as while they'd say 42 days detention without charge was a bit extreme, uh, 28 days detention without charge was fair enough. And I think in some ways that just kind of captures the removed, rather sort of cowardly discussion of liberty as it's articulated right now. That it doesn't seem to actually involve us we, the people, at all.